Hey guys, I know I promised you a teardown of my HDP50, <clears throat> but a combination of errors, uh, some on my part, some due to technology itself, um, that didn't happen. Um, so during the filming of uh, the teardown of this, my phone suffered a fatal error uh, and it did not record much more than two minutes of the process. Um, so nothing I could do about that. But once I realized that, I said, well, I'm just gonna send it anyways. Um, obviously unrecorded, but what had happened, I loaded up six of these uh, steel ball bearings they are 8.35 grams, we'll call them 8.4 grams for the sake of it. And on the first shot, the follower stuck. It hooked this edge and it snapped the follower clean off. Um, not only that, I don't know what happened inside here the dent probably folded over, which is like a kind of like a rubber cut off piece of rubber hose. Uh, and then it damaged my barrel. Uh, so that was that. And I thought it was all it was all done for. I managed to reshape the barrel. I actually show you. I had this big drive punch here. That I uh you can see, I actually still see the ring on it. I just uh tapped it gently into the barrel and straightened her back out. Um, but the fix that I encountered for this problem um, is, you can see out there, it is a 440 by half inch socket head cap screw. Um, on the follower here, there is a a hole, a knuckle, where the follower actually is meant to kind of curve upwards as it travels into the breech here. So I was able just to, it's just plastic, so I just threaded that in by hand. And it makes for a very solid stop against the the base of the, the pistol here. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not plastic on plastic, and at the same time it's also not plastic on plastic here. It is metal on plastic, so if, in fact, this were to happen again, it's not going to snap this off. So this might be something to do from the get-go. I can't re recall exactly what it looks like, um, if, that, if you can even see that knuckle, but once this plastic tab is broken off, it's there, and literally just hand thread that in. No, no special tools. I just use an Allen key and kind of force its way in there. <laughs> Um, so this is CO2, this is a seven and a half joule version, Canadian version. So it had no restrictor in the grip, but it did have a valve block. So valve block is removed, restrictor was not present, so it is also not there. Now, something to note, and this is a late model, I just got this a couple weeks ago. Uh, they were out of stock for a long time in Canada and now they're back in stock. <clears throat> um, was I also bought an 11 joule uh, valve to swap out of this or swap into this um, and it comes with the little restrictor. Well, this out of the box will not accept the restrictor. Uh, if you watched my previous compact video, uh, the HTP 50 compact, I encountered the same issue where it looked like it would just plug right in and it, it, it does sort of, but there's no threads. Um, there are no threads present in this model either to thread the factory 11 joule CO2 restrictor. In. Now, Florian's kit that has the push in type, I imagine still works. And shout out to Florian, uh, apparently he's sending me a a new product to try um so i actually ordered another one of these 
because this is gonna become my prototype. I have some things to try, uh, you know, kind of like that. I don't like to mess up whatever I end up with in the end. I want to be like the best of everything. I don't want it to be, I hack this one apart and you know, I end up with this hokey pokey thing at the end. I want my end version to be the best of all my uh, accumulation. So, um, any case, the 11 joule CO2 restrictor does not thread in to the seven half joule version. Um, and I can't confirm that uh, the Flory, Florian's kit, the, the push-in type does, but it would appear that it does. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, so we're gonna fire this. These are 8.3, 8.4 gram steel wall bearings, 12.7 millimeter. Uh, 12 gram CO2 and that's that. No air. Good. There we go. Two ten. Oh. Oh, I'm losing balls here. Aha! Uh -huh. Glad I caught this on camera. So, that wasn't a ball out the barrel action. I'm gonna step back here. Even with that steel Allen head there, see this is the first time I've actually done this. It caught, just caught the corner of that and jammed. So when I tip the pistol down, the marker down, sorry marker, the ball actually fell out of there. So let's try and release that. Oh, she jammed good. Sorry guys, kind of trying to do that. And that would explain how it got snapped off the last time. There we go. So definitely don't want that to happen. You saw I struggled a little bit with just unhooking it off the edge there. Now, uh, Zhang Yang from uh, the Facebook group mentioned about uh, shimming this. So in this, this spring, the follower spring kind of goes in this pocket here, uh, adding a little bit of shim, which will prevent this. Now, I know it's convenient for it to lock, but it'll prevent it from ever getting to the lock point. But while at the same time, you don't want to shim it too much that you can't load a full six balls in there. So it looks like I'm still gonna have to do that after all. 210 nevertheless. Um, I don't know, that's probably like 16 joules or so. Uh, where did I put my... Chrono, there we go. Now my yakin's probably gonna jump up here because it, uh, Warmed up a little. 212. A little bit. 184. 172. 168. 162. And that was it. So you can see, get really one Hail Mary, and then she dies off. Those are heavy balls. I mean, for this, this size 50 cal pistol, I think yeah, it might be a little overkill. Um, I would like to try the four gram steel cord riot balls to see how they do. Um, but this is leading me down the road. So I've already damaged my barrel. I have new, I have some barrel material coming today um, that I'm going to try in here. And then we'll see what it goes. Um, I would like to see, well, 
I'd really like to see 25 fairly consistently. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be possible on just a 12 gram, at least not with those heavy balls. Definitely not. But uh, I do look forward to uh, Florian's kit. So I ordered another one of these because I didn't want to. I want to give him a fair shake and not install it on some hacked up. Well, I say hacked up, but pretty happy with actually how it's working now. Um, but I want to test this kit on a completely unmodified, out of the box pistol. And uh, I learned a lot from tearing this one down. <sighs> I mean, for the price of two of these is the cost of an FSC. So I mean, if I ruin this one, I got a full thing of parts here. I know you guys, not everybody has that, that option and, and that's why I do these videos is to hopefully save some others the same headaches I am experiencing. Um, being I'm new to this Humorex stuff with all their tiny little screws and plastic bits but I in, my intention is to make this reliable. now. I love this system. It's ready to go. And since I've had this and it's been working, I just keep it. I got one in one drawer, one in another drawer. And it's almost like, you know, I just know they're gonna be there and you just slap them and go. I got my other armament uh, placed around the, the home, but um, these are just really convenient. So I'm hoping to get a little more out of them, make them, uber reliable and hopefully save you guys some uh, some time messing around so stay tuned barrels coming uh that's gonna be trick if it works so watch out for that